Hare Krishna. Welcome back to our online Bhagavad Gita reading retreat labs. So today we are going to complete the chapter number four, which is transcendental knowledge. So this is the fifth section of our chapter number four. So today we are going to us read from verse number 34 to verse number 42. So this section particularly summarizes the summary of the transcendental knowledge. Okay. So without any delay, let's move to our Veda base, where exactly we'll be starting from chapter number four, verse number 34. Translation. Just try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master. Inquire from him submissively and render service unto him. The self-realized souls can impart knowledge unto you because they have seen the truth. Purport. The path of spiritual realization is undoubtedly difficult. The Lord therefore advises us to approach a bona fide spiritual master in the line of disciplic succession from the Lord himself. No one can be a bona fide spiritual master without following this principle of disciplic succession. The Lord is the original spiritual master and the person in the disciplic succession can convey the message of the Lord as it is to his disciple. No one can be spiritually realized by manufacturing his own process as is the fashion of the foolish pretenders. The Bhagavatam 6.3.19 says, Dharmam tu saksha bhagavat pranitam. The path of religion is directly enunciated by the Lord. Therefore, mental speculation or dry arguments cannot help lead one to the right path. Nor by independent study of books of knowledge can one progress in spiritual life. One has to approach a bona fide spiritual master to receive the knowledge. Such a spiritual master should be accepted in full surrender and one should serve the spiritual master like a manual servant without false prestige. Satisfaction of a self-realized spiritual master is a secret of advancement in spiritual life. Inquiries and submission constitute the proper combination for spiritual understanding. Unless there is submission and service, inquiries from the learned spiritual master will not be effective. One must be able to pass the taste of the spiritual master and when he sees the genuine desire of the disciple, he automatically blesses the disciple with genuine spiritual understanding. In this verse, both blind following and absurd inquiries are condemned. Not only should one hear submissively from the spiritual master, but one must also get a clear understanding from him. In submission and service and inquiries, a bona fide spiritual master is by nature very kind toward the disciple. Therefore, when the student is submissive and is always ready to render service, the reciprocation of knowledge and inquiries becomes perfect. Now let's move to the next verse, chapter number four, verse number 35, translation. Having obtained real knowledge from a self-realized soul, you will never fall again into such illusion, for by this knowledge, you will see that all living beings are but part of the Supreme, or in other words, that they are mine. Purport. The result of receiving knowledge from a self-realized soul or one who knows things as they are is learning that all living beings are parts and parcels of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna. The sense of an existence separate from Krishna is called Maya. Ma means not, Ya means this. Something that we have nothing to do with Krishna, that Krishna is only a great historical personality and that the Absolute is the impersonal Brahman. 
Actually, as it is stated in the Bhagavad Gita, this impersonal Brahm, Brahman is the personal effulgence of Krishna. Krishna, as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is the cause of everything. In the Brahma Sanghita, it is clearly stated that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the cause of all causes. Even the millions of incarnations are only his different expansions. Similarly, the living entities are also expansions of Krishna. The Mayavadi philosophers wrongly think that Krishna losses his own separate existence in his many expansions. This thought is material in nature. We have experience in the material world that a thing, when fragmentally distributed, losses its own original identity. But the Mayavadi philosophers fail to understand that absolute means that one plus one is equal to one and that one minus one is also equal to one. This is the case in the absolute world. For what of sufficient knowledge in the absolute science, we are now covered with illusion and therefore we think that we are separated from Krishna. Although we are separated parts of Krishna, we are nevertheless not different from him. The bodily difference of the living entities is maya or not actual fact. We are all meant to satisfy Krishna. By Maya alone, Arjuna thought that the temporary bodily relationship with his kinsmen was more important than his eternal spiritual relationship with Krishna. The whole teaching of the Gita is targeted towards the end that a living being, as Krishna's eternal servitor, cannot be separated from Krishna. And his sense of being an identity apart from Krishna is called Maya. The living entities as separate parts and parcels of the Supreme have a purpose to fulfill. Having forgotten that pur purpose since time immemorial, they are situated in different bodies as men, animals, demigods, etc. Such bodily differences arise from forgetfulness of the transcendental service of the Lord. But when one is engaged in transcendental service, to Krishna consciousness, one becomes at once liberated from this illusion. One can acquire such pure knowledge only from the bona fide spiritual master and thereby avoid the delusion that the living entity is equal to Krishna. Perfect knowledge is that the supreme soul, Krishna, is the supreme shelter for all living entities and giving up such shelter the living entities are deluded by the material energy, imagining themselves to have a separate identity. Thus, under different standards of material identity, they become forgetful to, of Krishna. When, however, such deluded living entities become situated in Krishna consciousness, it is to be understood that they are on the path of liberation is confirmed in the Bhagavatam 2.10.6. Muktir hitantyataha rupam sarupena vivastitaha. Liberation means to be situated in one's constitutional position as an eternal servitor of Krishna, Krishna consciousness. Now we'll move to the next verse. Chapter number 4, verse number 36. Translation. Even if you are considered to be the most sinful of all sinners, when you are situated in the boat of transcendental knowledge, you will be able to cross over the ocean of miseries. Purport. Proper understanding of one's constitutional position in relationship to Krishna is so nice that it can at once lift one from the struggle for existence which goes on in the ocean of Nishines. This material world is sometimes regarded as an ocean of science and sometimes as a blessing forest. In the ocean, however expert a swimmer one may be, 
the struggle for existence is very severe. If someone comes forward and lifts the struggling swimmer from the ocean, he is the greatest savior. Perfect knowledge received from the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the path of liberation. The boat of Krishna consciousness is very simple, but at the same time, the most sublime. Now we will move to the next verse. Chapter number four, verse number 37. Translation, is a blazing fire turns firewood to ashes. O Arjuna, so does the fire of knowledge burn to assess all reactions to material activities. Purport. Perfect knowledge of self and super self and of their relationship is compared herein to fire. The fi this fire not only burns up all reactions to impious activities, but also all reactions to pious activities, turning them to assess. There are many stages of reaction. Reaction in the making, reaction fructifying, reaction already achieved, and reaction a priori. But knowledge of the constitutional position of the living entity burns everything to assess. When one is in complete knowledge, all reactions, both a priori and a posteriori, are consumed. In the Vedas, Brihad Aranyak Upanishad 4.4.22, it is stated, Uve, Uvesvesha, Eti, Tarati, Amraha, Sadha, Asadhuni. One overcomes both the pious and impious reactions of work. Now we'll move to the next verse, chapter number four, verse number 38. Translation. In this world, there is nothing so sublime and pure as transcendental knowledge. Such knowledge is the mature fruit of all mysticism. And one who has become accomplished in the practice of devotional service enjoys this knowledge within himself in due course of time. When we speak of transcendental knowledge, we do so in terms of spiritual understanding. As such, there is nothing so sublime and pure as transcendental knowledge. Ignorance is the cause of our bondage, and knowledge is the cause of our liberation. This knowledge is the mature fruit of devotional service. And when one is situated in transcendental knowledge, he need not search for peace elsewhere for he enjoys peace within himself. In other words, this knowledge and peace culminate in Krishna consciousness. That is the last word in the Bhagavad Gita. Now let's go to the next verse, chapter number four, verse number 39, translation. A faithful man who is dedicated to transcendental knowledge and who subdues his senses is eligible to achieve such knowledge. And having achieved it, he quickly attains the supreme spiritual peace. Purport. Such knowledge in Krishna consciousness can be achieved by a faithful person who believes found in Krishna. One is called a faithful man who thinks that simply by acting in Krishna consciousness, he can attain the highest perfection. This faith is attained by the discharge of devotional service and by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare, which cleanses one's heart of all material dart. Over and above this, one should control the senses. A person who is faithful to Krishna and who controls the senses can easily attain perfection in the knowledge of Krishna consciousness without delay. Now let's move to the next verse. Chapter number four, verse number 40. Translation. 
but ignorant and faithless persons who doubt the revealed scriptures do not attain god consciousness they fall down for the doubting soul there is happiness neither in this world nor in the next purport out of many standard and authoritative revealed scriptures the bhagavad gita is the best persons who are almost like animals have no faith in or knowledge of the standard revealed scriptures and some even though they have knowledge of or can cite passages from the revealed scriptures have actually no faith in these words and even though others may have faith in scriptures like bhagavad gita they do not believe in or worship the personality of godhead shri krishna such persons cannot have any standing in krishna consciousness they fall down out of all the above mentioned persons those who have no faith and are always doubtful make no progress at all men without faith in god and his revealed word find no good in this world nor in the next for them there is no happiness whatsoever one should therefore follow the principles of revealed scriptures with faith and thereby be raised to the platform of knowledge only this knowledge will help one become promoted to the transcendental platform of spiritual understanding in other words doubtful persons have no status whatsoever in spiritual emancipation one should therefore follow in the footsteps of great acharyas who are in the disciplic succession and thereby attain success now let's move to the next verse chapter number 4 verse number 41 translation one who acts in devotional service renouncing the fruits of his actions and whose doubts have been destroyed by transcendental knowledge is situated factually in the self thus he is not bound by the reactions of work who conquer of riches purport one who follows the instructions of the bhagavad gita as it is imparted by the lord the personality of god had himself becomes free from all doubts by the grace of transcendental knowledge he is a part and parcel of the lord in full krishna consciousness is already established in self knowledge as such he is undoubtedly a verb bondage to action now let's move to the next verse chapter number 4 verse number 42 translation therefore the doubts which have arisen in your heart out of ignorance should be slashed by the weapon of knowledge armed with yoga o bharata stand and fight purport the yoga system instructed in this chapter is called sanatana yoga or eternal activities performed by the living entity this yoga has two divisions of sacrificial actions one is called sacrifice of one's material positions and the other is called knowledge of self which is pure spiritual activity if sacrifice of one's material positions is not dofteel or spiritual realization then such sacrifice becomes material but one who performs such sacrifices with a spiritual objective or in devotional service makes a perfect sacrifice when we be come to the spiritual activities we find that these are also divided into two namely understanding of one's own self or one's constitutional position and the truth regarding the supreme personality of god one who follows the path of bhagavad gita as it is can very easily understand these two important divisions of spiritual knowledge for him there is no difficulty in obtaining perfect knowledge of the self as part and parcel of the lord and such understanding is beneficial for such a person can easily understand the transcendental activities of the lord 
in the beginning of this chapter the transcendental activities of the lord were discussed by the supreme lord himself one who doesn't understand the instruction of the gita is faithless and is to be considered to be misusing the fragmental independence awarded to him by the lord in spite of such instructions one who doesn't understand the real nature of the lord as the eternal blissful all knowing personality of god had is certainly full number 1 ignorance can be removed by gradual acceptance of the principles of krishna consciousness krishna consciousness is awakened by different types of sacrifices to the demi gods sacrifice to brahman sacrifice in celibacy in household life in controlling the senses in practicing mystic yoga in penance in foregoing material positions in studying the vedas and in partaking of a social institution called badnashram dharma all of these are known as sacrifices and all of them are based on regulated action but within all these activities the important factor is self realization one who seeks that objective is the real student of bhagavad gita but one who doubts the authority of krishna falls back one is therefore advised to study bhagavad gita or any other scripture under a bona fide spiritual master with service and surrender a bona fide spiritual master is in the disciplic succession from time eternal and he doesn't deviate at all from the instructions of the supreme lord as they were imparted millions of years ago to the sun god from whom the instructions of bhagavad gita have come down to the earthly kingdom one should therefore follow the path of bhagavad gita as it is expressed in the gita itself and beware of self interested people after personal aggrandizement who deviate others from the actual path the lord is definitely the supreme person and his activities are transcendental one who understands this is a liberated person from the very beginning of his study of bhagavad gita thus and the bhakti vedant purports to the fourth chapter of the simad bhagavad gita in the matter of transcendental knowledge so with this we have completed the chapter number 4 which is all about transcendental knowledge so in the next session we will start with a new chapter that is your chapter number 5 which is uh, basically the karma yoga action in krishna consciousness so we will stop here hari krishna